So this is the most requested review on the channel and people think I hate WD and I absolutely don't. But now because I've rebuilt my PC, I can actually pull these SSDs out and I have actually tested them now. So this is the Western Digital SN850X review and how does that compare to all of the other SSDs that we've tested on the channel. This video has been brought to you by LG and their OLED and QNET TVs. Upgrade your home cinema experience through the links in the description below or learn more later on in this video. Oh, oh this is good. Smell this. That is so nice though. I just put that in there so Redpool can reach out at some point. So then, I've actually tested two separate models, the 4TB and the 1TB. I had these two 4TB in my uh, editing rig there, but now because we've swapped over to the NAS editing, which is so much better in terms of redundancy and to client access, I've got these free uh, for other builds. The 4TB is double-sided, as you can see in here, and the one terabyte one is single-sided so I'm not sure if the two terabyte is dual-sided I think the two terabyte would be dual-sided as well but could not be because as you can see there is four chips on the four terabyte one which would kind of mean that the two terabyte one could only have them on one side I don't know I'm just telling you what I know the awesome bit about these WD SN850X SSDs is that they're often on a very, very good sale. Check out the links in the description below because when I bought them, I got an incredible deal of them. Don't just buy this. Just check out the chart and then make your decision. But let's check out the performance then. Firstly, the sequential read and write speed. So the orange bit or line is obviously our SSDs that I have tested. So we're looking at sequential read first and here you can see that it's slightly off the top of the chart but as you can see when we get above 6.9 gigabytes per second, 6660 megabytes per second, there is really no difference between like the best what we have is Solidine P44 Pro or the Samsung 980 Pro there there's like two, three percent. So they're all within margin of error, almost seven gigabytes per second read speeds. The one and the four terabyte ones are within 0 0.03 uh, percent. So they perform exactly the same. And if you're looking at the writes and the write graphs, here's a little bit of a difference now. There is about 1.5 to 2 percent difference between the one and a four terabyte, four terabyte is a little bit faster. And that's because when you're writing on it, obviously you've got more DRAM, you've got more bigger capacity. So writing on it will be slightly faster and better on the larger capacity drives than lesser ones, but still within like margin of error really. And again, the KC3000, that's the best of the gen four drives up there all the way down to this SN850X, they are all within 5%, so they perform about the same. Now, the more interesting and more relevant uh, results are the random read and write speeds of the SSD. And this is what we see here on the quick system drive benchmark. So this benchmark tests the drive of lots of random little files all over the place. So the drives that perform well in this test are good for a secondary drive that you don't use so heavily. So you're not running a full uh, you know, operating system or programs on it, but you're just opening documents and perhaps loading a game here or there, or opening some photos or doing light tasks on the secondary drive. And here you can see they perform very, very well. Interestingly, the Western Digital SN770M, this tiny little SSD here, is actually performing a little bit faster in this test than the SN850X, which is fascinating. A couple of percent better, but we're on the top of the best Gen 4 drives. Now, I have found that the Solidime P44 Pro are quite a bit better there, actually about 12% better, which is actually an increase that you can see. You can see that on the graph there as well. There is a bit of a jump, but this performs roughly in the same ballpark as the KC3000, Kingston Fury Renegade, SN770, which is interesting, which is a lower end drive actually, but on this secondary drive, it performs kind of the same. Obviously you can see that the Gen 5 drives are quite a bit faster up there because, you know, they're using better technology, but still, 
kind of on the upper part of the chart. Moving on to data drive benchmark, and this is more when you're storing a little bit larger files and more like a storage benchmark, reading and writing on it rather than you know taking stuff all over the place, a bit more sequential and data driven uh, drives here. We can see that we're lovely in the middle of the park. The one and the four terabyte one don't seem much different from each other. We're about the same as the Kingston Fire Q to 530 which is very interesting. The Solidime P44 Pros and the Samsung 990 Pro are a little bit faster, up to 9% faster on the top of the chart in terms of the data drive, but still pretty impressive speeds on these, like nothing bad to say. You can see that the KC3000 there is performing the same as this SN850X, but this SN850X is often on a much better deal. So, check out the links in the description below. I'll try to leave as much as I can in the description below. So you can actually like check them all out, what I'm talking about, then check the different pricing. But seems like the WD Black is a little bit of a better option. Hey, let's briefly talk about today's video sponsor, LG and their OLED TVs and why they are so special. Firstly, LG's award-winning TVs aren't just slim and sleek. The overall picture quality is second to none. OLED provides you the ultimate experience in color, screen brightness and vibrancy. Whether in 4K or 8K, the deep blacks and the crispy colors make any content stand out on the TV, including gaming. Secondly, LG offers various different sizes, designs and budgets to fit your environment and lifestyle. I'm gonna leave three of my favorites in the description below. Lastly, a lot of LG TVs have Dolby Vision and Dolby Atomos support, meaning you'll get the best in class visuals and sound. And that's why you can see a lot of creators use LG OLED TVs as their main monitors. I'm only scratching the surface of what these TVs are capable of. Check out LG's TV lineup through the description below. Learn more about them and the three of my favorites. Thanks LG for sponsoring this part of the video. Full system benchmark from PCMark10. So this tests the drive as an operating system. So where you're running programs or the full system that does a lot of random read and write speeds, very small files all over the place, but it's a little bit more intensive as well because sometimes you're writing big files or installing things and it's a little bit more heavier on the drive. And how good is the drive for an operating drive? So the drives that perform better on this test are better for your operating system, faster and so on. Here, the SN850X is right there on the top of the Gen 4 drives. As you can see, the KC3000 is now a little bit further down. The Samsung 990 EVO and 990 Pro are a little bit faster, a couple of percent faster. But then the Solidime P44 Pro, two terabyte and one terabyte ones are up to 10% faster. So as you can see, there's not that many drives that are faster than this SN850X. Interestingly, the one terabyte one performs like within 1% faster a little bit, which shows that they're both exactly the same. And even if you get the one terabyte one, it's a very good OS drive. That's what I had. But now when we rebuilt our editing uh, PC, I actually put the Solidime P44 Pro two terabyte drive in there because I had to choose a drive that I have multiples of. And because I did have two of these Solidimes, I was using that as my operating system drive, which seems to be the best Gen 4 NVMe drive that you can get. I'll try to leave that in the description below as well. As you can see, some of the other drives in this list are a little bit further down and slowly go lower and lower down. And as you can see, some of them are a lot more expensive, like the FireQ to 530, I know they have higher TBW rating, but it's still interesting that this SN850X performs so well compared to some of the more expensive drives, if that makes sense. Now, next off, drive consistency test. And this tests the drive in an absolutely insane environment. Let's say for some people who use a drive in a very intense way of a lot of write, a lot of write, like this test writes over 20 terabytes on it, fills the drive extra couple of times and uh, lasts about 20 hours. The drive is absolutely peaked and the drives that perform better in this test are drives that are for people with very insane and very specific workflows. Some of the creative professionals may do that or some people who are very intense in terms of video files, writing onto it and reading onto it, perhaps in like a NAS, kind of a flash NAS system or set up where you're constantly writing all the time things on it. For the normal users, this is not so relevant, but it still shows if you put the drive in a very 
intense workflow, how good are these drives? Now, what I've seen in this test is that drives that have larger capacity and larger DRAM cache will perform better. These drives all have DRAM cache and then one gigabyte per terabyte, and that's reflected on the four and then one terabyte versions here. The SN770M doesn't have DRAM cache, for example, and here you can see that it does actually impressively well compared to the SN850X that is only like within margin of error, within 1% of the performance. So that makes the SN770M or the SN770, obviously the M means that this is the 2020-30 version of this drive. You can get the full length of it as well, but that feels like a very, very good option if you want to save a little bit more budget. But the SN850X 4TB version is right on the top there, next to the Verbatim VI 7000G, which is a very surprising result actually there. I'm not sure why that performed so well. The FireQ to 530 and the Samsung 990 Pro are a little bit higher, but interestingly now we're beating slightly the Solidine P44 Pro and the Samsung 980 Pro, but as you can see, we're right on top of the charts. Impressive results, but the more expensive KC3000 from Kingston is quite a bit better. Interesting. I don't know exactly why, but that's quite a big difference between this and the Kingston KC3000, about 17%, as you can see, big gap in the chart there. But the Kingston also has 700 TBW rating, which lets you write a lot more and has a bit better longevity of the drive and is quite a bit more expensive as well. In terms of a four terabyte high-end Gen 4 drive, this is very, very good. Surprisingly, the Samsung 980 Pro two terabytes is performing about the same. So if you want to pick up some of the Samsung 980 Pro four terabytes, they're a little bit older drives and perhaps like a little bit earlier versions, but impressively still the 980 Pro like keeps up with this four terabyte drive as you can see in there and interestingly you gotta mention the one to four terabyte drive difference as well as you can see having four terabyte drive will be a lot better in here obviously because when you're dumping large files in there the larger DRAM cache will help and when you have larger capacity in, in there helps as well but for most people uh, when you're having editing video or something like that you're not writing I don't know a couple of terabytes on it in some cases you do, like we sometimes transfer 1.2 terabytes video project file onto a drive or something like that, then perhaps this might be a bit relevant for you. And if you don't want to wait for the drive a little bit longer because the one terabyte will start to slow down a little bit after a while, but then the four terabyte will be able to keep it up a little bit longer. As you can see here, we're getting 40 plus, almost double the performance on the four terabyte in terms of this test here compared to the one terabyte one. One more thing to talk about is the TBW rating, which is terabytes written spec. The higher the number is, the longer the longevity of the drive basically is, and the more it allows you to write large files on it. Now, this is the very industry standard, what we can see across Samsung and WD, they all have 600, it's not higher. Kingston KC3000, for example, has a little bit of a higher spec in there, uh, Solidime has a little bit higher on the one terabyte one, but then about the same for the two terabyte one. So that evens out there. Some of the Gen 5 drives are a little bit higher and so on. And some of the Gen 4 drives are extremely high, like the Sabrent Rocket 4.0 and the Cardia Z440 are extremely high in the terabyte written spec. Perhaps good to use in a NAS scenario or something like that. When you run them in RAID and you're doing a lot of writes on it, it should last a little longer. So in conclusion, should you be buying the SN850X? Depends what you're buying this SSD for. Is it OS drive? Is it project drive? Is it cache drive? Is it programs drive? Is it for an SSD's RAID system? That all depends. And I highly recommend checking out the pricing compared to the other charts and then look at the relevant benchmark that I just showed you. If you're just a secondary drive, you know, there's a little bit of cheaper options out there. I'd go with the SN770, for example. If you're looking for a project drive or operating system drive, then perhaps, yeah. But I'd highly recommend checking out also the other drives in there, like the Solidime um, has been like one of my favorites in a lot of these things, just for the price to performance ratio and how well it performs. I'm super impressed. So I'll leave the links in the description below. You check them out and then you choose that one for you. If you do want to reach out to me, you can reach out on Minect and I'll get back to all of my messages on Minect. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.